All right, hey friends, welcome back to my wine channel for another episode of Wine 101. Let's just get right to it today. We're gonna talk about all these crazy wine words that are thrown around when people describe their wine. Words like tannin, fruit forward, structure, finish, legs. What do they all really mean? We're gonna quickly break down 15 of the most important wine buzzwords so you can confidently add them to your wine vocabulary. Before we dive into the words, make sure you like and subscribe for more Fast Wine 101s that every wino should know. Also some great wine recommendations. And make sure to stick around to the end because I'll be tasting these two wines using all of these words to describe them so that way you know how to use them when you are chatting about wine. Word one, tannin. This is a big one. Tannin gives that cotton mouth grippy like sandpaper feeling on your tongue. It's technically tannic acid that comes from grape seeds, skins, and stems. This is important mainly for red wine because during winemaking, the juice spends time in contact with the grape skins in order for it to turn red. The juice absorbs the tannic acid and gives us that sensation on our tongue from the tannins. So for this one, remember that tannin is something you feel. Word two is dry. This might be one of the most misused words for beginning winos, so take note on this one. In the wine world, the word dry is only used to describe the amount of sugar in a wine. So a dry wine is a wine with no residual sugar. So often the mistake I hear is people saying a wine is dry when they feel that cotton mouth feeling when they swallow their wine. But now we know they should actually be saying that the wine is tannic or has a lot of tannin. So if you're ever reading about wine or hear someone say this wine is fermented dry, they're saying all of the sugar in those grapes was fermented into alcohol and there's no residual sugar left in the wine. Dry is really as simple as this. You don't taste any sugar. Word number three. Body. Body is a word that basically describes the weight of wine on your tongue. So a wine can be light bodied, medium bodied, or full bodied. My favorite analogy to use is milk. So does the weight of the wine feel more like skim milk, which would be light bodied, 2% medium bodied, or whole milk, which would be full bodied? Without getting too in depth here, the body of a wine is dependent on a few things like grape varietal, alcohol, tannin, sugar, but for the most part, the milk analogy will help guide you in determining the body of a wine. Word number four. Acid. We all know what acid is and it's really no different with wine. It's that zippy sensation on your mouth that makes your cheeks pucker and it's also what makes wine so refreshing. When you have a wine with a lot of acid, you'll notice your mouth start watering right after you swallow the wine. Think about drinking a lemonade or an apple juice. They're really high in acid and super refreshing. This is also a major component in food and wine pairing. Super fatty foods go really, really well with high acid wines. Word number five. Structure. This is another really common word and it's basically referring to the bones of a wine. A wine's structure is the measure of all the words that we just talked about. So think about it like the backbone of a wine. We're not talking flavors and aromas, we're talking about what holds all of those things together. Tannins, the acid, body, sugar, and the alcohol. This can get pretty complex, but these words are the structural components of the wine and can each be rated on a scale from low to high. All right, we're moving on to some flavors and aromas. These ones are a bit easier, so we're gonna fly right through them. Word number six, fruit forward. A fruit forward wine is a wine where the fruit flavors are the most dominant aroma and flavor in the wine. So we're talking the cherry, strawberry, raspberry, lemon, lime, grapefruit, mango, all of those beautiful fruits that we love in our wine. These are usually your younger wines and your most recent vintages that still have that pure varietal character, they're fresh, they're vibrant, and they haven't started to age yet. Word number seven earthy. So what does it really mean when someone says that a wine is earthy? Are you putting dirt in my wine? Like I don't really know how I feel about that. So it sounds weird, but it's actually the part of wine that I love the most. If you didn't have anything other than fruit flavors and aromas in your wine, it would be just like drinking a spiked Kool-Aid. We need some complexity and depth going on, you know what I'm saying? Earthy is when you pick up things like fresh potting soil, moss, forest floor, or dried leaves, which is one of my favorite things about wines from Tuscany. We are moving right along. Word number eight is mineral. This overarching descriptor word refers to things like limestone, chalk, saline, or graphite. And there's a ton of debate out there about what and where the heck minerality actually comes from, but for the most part, these are some pretty common descriptor words under the minerality umbrella. These things are not literally in our wine, but as with all of these descriptors, they're used as a metaphor to communicate what we're smelling and tasting. Two really awesome examples of this are a Sergico from Santorini and then a Chablis from France. In a glass of a Sergico from Santorini, you get that salinity ocean water smell and you're like, whoa, minerality, salinity, yes. And then in a Chablis from France, you're like, oh my gosh, it's like limestone, like white chalk. Have you ever heard anyone say word number nine, which is herbaceous? This wine smells herbaceous. 
This is a term used to describe things like fresh cut grass or different herbs like oregano and rosemary. A great example of this is a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. If you want to smell a wine and say, this is very herbaceous. Go get one and I can guarantee you will pick up a lot of those herbaceous notes. That fresh cut grass is super common in those wines. Word number 10, oak. You'll pick up oak in a wine when it's been aged in a barrel before bottling. But if you're feeling a little frisky, don't just stop and say that you smell or taste oak. What specific aroma or flavor is giving you that impression of oak? This is when you can get really, really specific. Under the umbrella of I smell oak, we are talking Clove, cinnamon, baking spice, vanilla, dill, cedar, caramel, thyme, smoked and toasted, charred wood. These are all things that come from the oak barrel. Let me ask you this. Do you like an oak Chardonnay or an un-oak Chardonnay? So they're completely different wines, but it's really good to know which one you prefer. We are moving right along onto word number 11, complexity. Simply put, a wine that has multiple types of flavors and aromas is complex. If you're picking up multiple things that we just talked about, like fruits and minerality and earthiness and herbaceousness in that wine, that is a complex wine. If you only smell fruit, it is said to be a simple wine. Word number 12, aged. So what is the deal with an aged wine? Is it better? Basically, as a wine ages, it develops more complexity. So if you like complex wines, you're probably gonna like an aged wine. But if you're only into those fruitier wines, then you probably don't like aged wine. Also, not all wine gets better with age. In order for a wine to be age-worthy, it has to be good quality. And that does not mean expensive. There are a ton of affordable bottles that can age really well for five to 10 years, but only quality wine can age. Word 13, finish. So how many of you have heard someone say, this wine is very long finish? That always confused me when I was first getting into wine. But the finish on a wine refers to how long the flavors linger in your mouth after you've swallowed the wine. This usually is an indicator of quality. The longer the finish, the better the quality. And a short finish is about two to three seconds, whereas a long finish lasts about 10 seconds or longer. Guys, I just wanna say, if you are still watching, thank you so much for watching until the end. I hope you're getting a lot out of these videos. And if you are, don't forget to like and subscribe below. Word number 14. Legs. Everyone's favorite wine word, legs, are those beautiful long streaks that drip down the side of the glass. They correlate with multiple things in the wine, even how clean the wine glass is. So I don't focus too much on them because there are so many different variables. In general, higher alcohol and residual sugar are two things that make them form thicker and slower. Think of syrup dripping down the bottle. It's really slow and really thick. Can you tell the quality of a wine by the legs? I say no, all legs are beautiful. All right, final word, word number 15, oxidized. So the longer your wine is open, the more it's going to be exposed to oxygen. For a quality wine, some oxygen right after popping the cork will actually help the wine to open up more and release more complex aromas and flavors. And for really tannic reds, it mellows out the tannin. But if the wine is open for too long, it can get too much oxygen and then become oxidized, basically on the path to vinegar. At that point, it starts to take on some vinegar-like smells and tastes a little nutty, kind of like bruised fruits, and then it loses that fresh, fruity flavor that we all love. I am a little picky, but if I don't have a wine preserver of some sort, I generally don't drink a red wine after two days and then a white wine after about three days. If you want to know how long is too long for white, red, and sparkling wine, I did an IGTV on my Instagram, so you can check that out for all of the technical timing of bottles. All right, so let's get to it. We're gonna try and experiment with all of these words using this Minuti Rosé from Cote de Provence. It is a 2019, so it's a young wine, not aged. Um, and here we go, so let's just start. All right, so can you see these legs? I'm not sure if you can see them on the camera, but uh, they're pretty light, which, uh, I mean, legs don't really, I don't think tell you that much anyways, and I do know that it is 13% alcohol, so the alcohol isn't giving these legs much weight, so let's smell it. Always in Cote de Provence Rosés, I feel like there's this minerality, salinity situation going on, which I definitely get on this, so there's your mineral. There's also like an herbaceousness, so it's not a ton, but I do get some grassy notes, but not a lot. So let's try the structure. So we're gonna taste and see what the backbones are like. So it's definitely light bodied. The acid is medium plus. So we got some rock and acid here. That is super refreshing, which totally coincides with the south of France. Like I'm totally drinking this on a boat somewhere in Saint-Tropez right now in my head. Um, so yeah, medium plus acid. It's definitely dry. I taste no residual sugar on this at all. And I think it has a good structure. So what words did we use? We used 
the legs, the structure, herbaceous, minerality, dry, light, and acid. All right, here we go. So this wine was actually opened, I think, two nights ago. It is from Lebanon. It's called Chateau Cassara, and it's a blend of Cab Sauv, Syrah, and Cab Franc. So, we're gonna give it a whirl, but I think it's definitely on the path of oxidization. AKA, it's probably a little bit oxidized. All right, so, let's smell. It's definitely fruit forward wine. I get a lot of lush, plum, jammy, raspberry, strawberry smells and flavors, but there is also a little bit of earthiness to it. I get potting soil, moss. It's a 2017, so I would not categorize this as an aged wine. Definitely got some grippy tannin. Definitely oak on this. Specifically, baking spices, cedar, clove, vanilla. I smell something different, honestly, every time I pick up this wine. There's a ton of fruit. There's also some herb herbaceousness. There's floral. So I would definitely call this wine complex. I think there's a lot going on in the glass. Every time I pick it up and smell it, I kind of get something different. I think that the finish is also, I wouldn't say the finish is long. I think it's kind of like a medium finish. It's not past 10 seconds, but it does linger in my mouth. All right, there you have it. 15 wine buzzwords to describe your wine. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe below. Leave a comment if you have any questions or comments. Hopefully this video really helps you in describing your wines and helping you understand a little bit more of that wine vocabulary. Cheers and see you next time.